Hello, everybody. Welcome to Yay Sayers episode two, where we say yes to success. Where we say yes to success. Ooh. And they were doing this exercise where they had to pick up certain like Skittles green from a bowl of Skittles. And they were green Skittles. I'm like, that was an exercise. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Like, what what is this phenomenon called is this like a is this like some psychological lights, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you're right my bad <laughs> hello oh, oh my god well anyway i don't even that know note, how i got on that tangent this is obviously clearly outside of the scope of introducing our episode too, <laughs> too, too, too much <laughs> matthew mcconaughey in your life that's what it is uh, or maybe not enough maybe you, you need more maybe this maybe is what you I need, need more continues yeah. with the green lights but anyways anyway hello hello everybody welcome to yay sayers episode two where we say yes to success where we say yes to success Ooh. um do we need to introduce ourselves again alex and priya we work hi together. everybody my name is alex <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could, we could. Hi, everybody. Uh, maybe we'll just do this for the first couple episodes. But uh, the name's Alex. Um, and Priya. I mean, and, and Priya. Uh, <laughs> and, she, and we read books, and we talk about those those people. No, that no, wrote no. You listen. Books. You listen to books, and I read them. I listen to books, and she reads the books, uh, and we talk about the uh, the success of those who wrote and or recorded those books, and how that can apply. <laughs> To our lives <laughs> yeah is that about so it is that a nice little synopsis is, for it that's a nice synopsis that's a beautiful oh a green light oh my lord um today's episode is on mindy kaling is mm. everyone hanging out without me and other concerns um so i must say that at first i listened to the audiobook um, and we were going to record last week. Mm -hmm. And and then I was doing some prep work for recording the episode because I like to, you know, have some notes in handy, kind of have a sense of how I, a gathering of my feelings on <clears throat> certain takeaways I have from, from the book. And I noticed that that was very, and then difficult for me to do just going off of what I had heard uh, in the audio book. Um, and so I was kind of like looking for excerpt materials online and I just read like a paragraph out of her book and noticed a bunch of things I had missed from listening to it. So then, you know, I think you and I got into this whole conversation last week of listening comprehension versus reading. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so I decided I would get the actual oh visual book God. because I comprehend, I paid money and I comprehend so much better when I'm looking at things, and I got a lot out of it. Do you highlight? Green light. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, so bad. Yeah. Okay, so you do. All right, rad. Very, very cool. Well, and then I take. I'm a total nerd. And then I take notes, right? Like I'll just mm -hmm. so I don't lose track. Yeah. Hey, you're a better reader than I am. You know, maybe, maybe that comes with the. Uh, with time and knowing how to retain your your thoughts, I don't know about better reader. I just take put some effort into synthesizing. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of us has to, right? One of us, one of us has to carry this team on their back. Of course, <laughs> you're the knowledgeable one. I make the jokes. This is the greatest, you know. It's, little... What a great, what <laughs> a great partnership. This is oh, awesome. My. Anyway. I think what we should do is give a little bit of a background of if you're not sure who Mindy Kaling is. I mean, if you've ever seen The Office, you know who she is. Uh, Kelly Kapoor from The Office, her famous uh, or I guess most famous role she's done, just to know to name a few of like she was on SNL uh, or she wrote for SNL for a little bit or like maybe a week or two. It was like a guest one. She writes her own. Um, uh, she writes her own. Um, she has her own Netflix, Netflix series. series. Yeah. So she's an Indian American uh, writer, comedian, <clears throat> actress, producer, I would say. Um, and she wrote Never Have I Ever, which is one of my favorite series on Netflix. So, yeah. Why? 
because um and we can get into this too let's just get into this uh Uh, the book yeah like we wanted to introduce a little bit how the book is structured too so we'll do that quickly it's kind of Mm -hmm. like i wouldn't really say it's not like a memoir to me it's more of um maybe a compilation of stories and anecdotes from various points in her life friendships and career in a Mm -hmm. loose chronological order Mm -hmm. interspersed with lists and opinions coming from her of what she likes Correct. or doesn't like yeah. or things of that nature. Now, was it uh, your understanding too, or like when you were reading and listening to it, that she kind of, she did the whole chronological thing for a while. And then at the end, she just like hits you with a bunch of opinions. Yeah. It okay. seems All like right. that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. That's how I yeah, thought yeah. about it a little bit, but just wondering. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 It seems like that. But even in the, in the first half of the book, it looks like there's some, uh, you know, interspersing of like <clears throat> kind of blurbs and lists or other things. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. to me, the book is less of like, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like she's trying to create a memoir that's chronological. It seems that she's kind of like talking about her life and her career almost as if she's like, you know, just, T- talking about like talking to a friend that's the kind of tone right mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah mm-hmm. like very much her as a writer like in her voice um now the one thing i didn't understand is where the title came from like other yeah than so this is something instance yeah so this is something that i actually noticed one of the examples of something i noticed where there's a part of it called there's like a section in the book called that so when i see oh. these then I'm uh, like, oh, I missed that when I was listening. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but what was that part is, about? That part, or I think, general idea, is about when she's talking about her um, friends crew from high school, and they mm. used to hang out at the Cheesecake Factory. But right. then she started spending time with Mavis because Mavis was more into comedy, and they would do sketches and bits together. And then that one scenario where they're in the mall because she's decided to hang out with Mavis, but they pass by the Cheesecake Factory where she and her friends used to hang out, and they're hanging out together without her. So mm-hmm. I think that's the the scenario that takes place in this. And then it happens again later. She mentions it when she's in the writer's room for the first time writing for the office and she felt like the other three writers in the room were all friends um Mm -hmm. and she was kind of like she almost feels like she had a little bit of imposter syndrome at that time which is interesting to to see you know everybody has that um but i think she kind of refers to it then as well right yeah 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 so i'm not sure why she decided to call the whole book that but i know that you know probably her take on it like her kind of comedic point of view it also gives a little bit of a an insight into her like i mean she is kind of like that though like especially Mm -hmm. growing up it was very she wasn't the cool kid which is like it it was nice to see that you know it was nice to see she was just uh she just knows how to work hard or she knows where to who to talk to and like how to get involved with things uh and even being the the kid that really didn't have many friends or like wasn't the cool kid back in high school all the way through even some of her of her anecdotes and uh, some of the things she said in the beginning, I was very I liked that a lot because I mean maybe it's because I, I I'm a, just coming out of that uh, that era of like thinking that the whole world revolves around what you're like in high school and college and then now trying now realizing that none of that really matters. Um, huh. it, it's cool to it's cool to see that like she is putting that down and like she probably didn't think it like it was the same thing you know when you're in it you think that it's the thing but like looking back on it she's like I also wasn't a cool kid uh, but you know what I'm on the office so like screw everybody uh, you know all those people that made fun of me all those people that even some of her bullies like got like she she told what did she say happened to one of her bullies. Like he got some girl pregnant and then like, Oh, the guy from Senegal and he came made, in and then he told her she was like a, a whale or something. Yeah. And he was like trying made, to get her to, yeah. Made fun of her weight. Yeah. And then he turned out to be, uh, not so well off. So it, it's just yeah. like, it was interesting. It was a, a really nice little section. That was, I was, uh, the one that I kind of, uh, you know, resonated with the most, but, uh, either yeah. way, I, I digress. Well, no, that's, I mean, that's a great, that was actually my first point that I wanted to to bring up about the book is that, and I have, of course, I have like a passage that I'd like to read. 
Um, and it's actually just in the introduction too. But um, she says, she's talking about how this isn't a guidebook. And she says, like, things along the lines of, I frequently use my debit card to buy things that cost less than $3 because I never have cash on me. My bedroom is so untidy. It looks like vandals ransacked the anthropology sales section. I'm kind of a mess. I did, however, fulfill a childhood dream of writing and acting in TV and movies. Um, but so the TV and movies thing we can we can talk about in a little bit. But what I so the first time I listened to the book, I kind of felt like when I listened, right, I kind of felt like we talked about this a little bit. I kind of felt like I didn't get as much out of it based on, on the umbrella of our podcast where we're here mm -hmm. to figure out how and why somebody came successful became successful and apply those lessons back to our lives. Um, but I think when I, the second time around when I read it, like certain things started to click a little bit or I started to connect the dots. Um, and one related to what you were just talking about, where it really feels to me like she, she lays herself out there. She talks about, and she, she like, unabashedly puts herself out there. She's talking about like her weight. There's like a, a, a chapter titled, you know, a chubby for life or something like that about mm -hmm. all these things where she, you know, she like lost her passport and she never got it again. It's been like three years. Um, and she's really just like saying it how it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of level of sort of like, just not, caring to or being too fearful about what people are going to think or about what they're going to say. I'm sure at some point, and we've seen some of the stories from her book, I don't think she delves too much into like the psychological part of it, which is probably what we were missing a little bit, at least for mm -hmm. me the first time. But I just like, it's, it's awesome to me that again, she like fully embraces herself. Things that some people might consider flaws or mm -hmm. things that some people that might turn people off, it all doesn't matter. There's like these pictures of her and I had like, you know, not a, a typical kind of American upbringing because I grew up as an Indian American as well. I, I love these like these, these pictures you can see throughout the book of her just like her little like awkward kind of like Indian kid, you know, in glasses on a swing. And she talks about these stories too. And so at some point, like when I was thinking about the book or when I was reading, a phrase occurred to me and it was, she's not perfect. She's Mindy. Mm -hmm. Oh, did she, What if did I apply that? that to myself? No, I, oh. I can't like, I felt that. Oh, look that. at you. <laughs> at you. So I like, I feel like I spend a lot of my life almost like trying to, you know, get, it's it's not on purpose, right? I'm not consciously maybe doing it most of the time, but trying to get people's approval, hiding parts of who I am, definitely not just laying it out there, um, mm -hmm. not laying out my opinions strongly, keeping a lot of them inside um, and kind of almost like chasing perfection in a way, feeling like I have to conform to some version of me that's not me. And so that's something I learned from the book, even though she doesn't outwardly talk about it. But I feel like there's too much talking in my life anyway. It's more like through the action of writing the book and even putting out these lists. These are things I don't like. These are things I like. That's kind of like empowering a little bit. Like, what if I embrace that, you know, in myself a little bit more? Really identifying very heavily with who you are and just being okay with. She seems very self-aware, and that's another thing that I like. I'd like to point out is like because I think even uh, writing writing comedy is is really good about being self-aware and being able to analyze yourself and the actions that you do and the actions that others take. It allows you to do that. Um, so, but like, does do you think that also plays a part in how she's able to uh, really identify with herself and re like really put herself out there? Is just how self-aware she is, and uh, over time, she just came to accept it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's an interesting question. And I don't know if I have an answer to that question, but it does kind of segue into another topic that I find interesting. Um, 
that I also, so kind of like starting to connect dots also between our previous episode and this one. Um, but for instance, like with Matthew McConaughey, we, we don't get the sense of a lot of overthinking on decisions and kind of sure. who he is necessarily mm-hmm. throughout. I'm sure there's moments of that, right? Of course. Um, but there's a lot of forward action. And I kind of saw the same here. It's a lot of forward where action. Where forward action and kind of some level of just acceptance of what is and mm-hmm. then moving forward with that rather than internally fighting it in this like mental battle. <laughs> sure. um but so i think you asked about like the relationship between comedy and that um but to me it's almost also the relationship between success and that where i'm kind of seeing that success of course it's dependent on many factors but it sort of feels like one of the factors is just understanding who you are and embracing it and going, going forward for with that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the lucky thing, and we, we talked about this last week, but the lucky thing she had was she knew exactly what she wanted to be when she was young. So it gave her all that time to really just like push for that. And I feel like that <laughs> gave her a very heavy advantage. Yes. Can we talk about that a little bit? Sure. I think that, that would be very, yeah, that would be very helpful. Um, so, yeah, I think from it, it, very clear, like she was into comedy she hung out with her friend Mavis more because Mavis was into comedy. Mm-hmm. They would record sketches that they wrote mm-hmm. uh, when they were like teenagers. Uh, it seems like she even did that before, earlier on. I mean, even think about the fact that like when we're a kid, like I, I, I'm just going uh, to... Like, yeah. When they were younger and she was younger, she was doing all this stuff. Um, yeah. And that allowed... Her, like think about when you're a kid and you, ha- you, you still have a lot of the skills from when you were a child. Like, because you spend years on that, that that stuff, you know, you spend a lot of time uh, and, and sorry if I, I cut you off in it to put it on. This no, tangent, no, no. But like, this is um, great. Is she, uh, I think the idea, because like, again, when I was a kid, I was making YouTube videos and like, I know how to work a camera these days because like, and it, it's something that like moved me towards something. Uh, but it was like years of just un, um undistracted uh, or uh what's the word what's the word i'm hanging out with too many germans i forget english words um oh my god Made in it's german when, this can be a bilingual I, podcast. kind of kind of i have no idea um but uh it's like uh there's undivided there's an undivided approach to um yeah like the attention put at these different skills and like the fact yes. that she like at a kid because there's a lot of times and i think that's i think the point i'm getting to is like, especially when we're making, like, you and I are making a, a bunch of changes in our lives right now, and we're trying to figure out the next steps yeah. and then move forward with the new career path, we have to realize that there is a long period of, of learning and a long period of, like, sitting with, like, being an amateur, being a newbie, being everything. But it's when you're a kid, you're always a newbie with everything. So it doesn't matter. But now as an adult, there's a different approach to it. There's a different feeling that comes along with it. You know, you may be 40, 50, 60 years old trying to redo your thing. Uh, and once you jump into something, you feel like a kid again. And it's like, mm. in, but not in a good way. Maybe not mm. in, not necessarily in a good way. Or it could be. It could be mm. in a good way of like that you're revitalizing yourself. You're becoming a new version of yourself, which could also be a cool perspective of that. Um, but I just, uh, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was that that concept of like somebody that really knew exactly who they were and what they were going to do, even from an early age, uh, allowed them to really hit the ground running and just keep running with it for a long, long period of time, more so that any of us will have that like go through those changes or, or like changing career paths or whatever, you know? Yeah. And it al- also like, I wonder if a little bit has to do with being able to embrace what you enjoy early on. So true. I know for me, for instance, like, let's see what it, and and you already mentioned you like to record YouTube videos when you were Mm -hmm. younger, right? And you're still doing that. Um, What did I do? I would, in my free time, choreograph dances with friends and record them or perform them at places. 
-hmm. And of course, like dance is a hobby of mine, but I never like it wasn't it didn't seem like an opportunity for me to pursue entertainment or to pursue dance or to pursue like arts in that way as a career Mm -hmm. because I was always told that that wasn't a career like your career needs to be more serious it needs to be this like a lawyer or an engineer or a doctor right Mm -hmm. and I found this I would love to find out more about because she didn't write about it in the book but you know as somebody she's obviously comes from an Indian upbringing and her parents were both, her dad was an architect, her mom an OBGYN. It doesn't seem like she had too much of the pressure to do those types of things instead of what she enjoyed. Because even mm-hmm. when she went to college, she, I think she studied English literature or something at Dartmouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she had that kind of, it seems like she had that support system to embrace the things that she was already spending her time enjoying doing as a child. And she put herself in more situations with more of those things around her, even with those examples of her friends' choices. Like she actually started spending more time with friends who were into the same things that she was into as a conscious decision. Sure. Do you think that has the, the fact that she's the youngest child has anything to do with it? Maybe. Yeah. I can't Cause, say. Yeah, I wonder because I, I wonder what the, the the situation was like for her brother per se. Mm. Like her her parents in the situation that she described seem to be relatively lax or relatively supportive. So like even doing the whole thing with the um the performances, the plays or whatever that she'd put on, run up and down the stairs, and they they'd humor it for a little while and be like, all right, that's enough. But um, I'm wondering if there was a difference because I mean I know you're the oldest, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, th- now is the was the um, the situation different for for I mean, uh, I'm guessing with Indian culture, there's a difference between uh, how women are treated and how men are treated within the family. Is that true? Or is that because you were in America um, and like a different situation? I don't know anything about that. Yeah, th- that's a great question. I would say not because of America or not because of anything like that. But my parents Uh, And that's the thing I love about my parents. Like they stress education Mm -hmm. as the top goal for like, they wanted all of us and they want all of us to be financially independent, regardless of, you know, man or woman, boy or girl. And so that's why I had those, you know, the pressures put on me as a child to Mm -hmm. achieve and to, to, you know, to succeed. Um, I think if there were a kind of boy versus girl thing, my, you know, this, my parents, my parents wouldn't have tried as hard as they did. They definitely tried a lot harder with me. Um, And then they got, you know, probably got a little bit more lax with the next child and got even laxer with the third child. So maybe it's more of like a, just parents getting chiller or getting a little bit more tired as they go okay. on <laughs> with the <Okay>. children. <laughs> <laughs> like, do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, do your, does your brother, uh, like, what, what, is, what do your siblings do? Is like, or, I mean, if you want to get into that, like, I don't know. Like, is there, was there a different approach to that? Or did they also have that pressure as well? Do you know? Yeah. So actually, my dad just brought this up last time I was home. And um, he said something that he's like, oh, I, you know, I, I sat with Priya a lot and kind of worked with her and sort of helped her when she needed help with homework and like made sure that she was doing well. And then, you know, my sister kind of had, had that as well. My brother, my brother's 12 years younger. So there's like a huge age difference. And my parents, obviously like 12 years later. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and my dad said for my brother, he would just ask like, Hey, do you need any help? And if my brother said no, she usually would be like, no, I'm good. My dad like, okay. And that was it. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is interesting. I wonder what it was like for her brother. Yeah. And whether that was a factor. I, I know she said that her brother would get a little embarrassed of her. So I'm yeah. trying to wonder if that's like. Even that she like admitted that. I'm like, oh my God, these are the things I would never admit about myself. <laughs> What, that like what that she would be embarrassing? <laughs> yeah. 
Why? It's I funny. Don't, I don't know. I don't know. It is funny. It is Ugh. funny. You were a kid, especially if you're a kid. Like when you're a kid and you do stupid shit, like you just you're you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I share a bunch of that stuff. Like you're just dumb. Yeah. Oh. Um, but you did mention like so here's something that I, I do think that um that I really gained a lot from, which is why so I mentioned to you that I'm applying for this screenwriting screenwriting lab, and this is something that you reminded of in the, me of in the beginning when you were um, talking mm-hmm. about your friend visiting and you wish you could spend time with her, but instead you were working. Um, I thought it was very interesting how she kind of got her in, and let's say her in is being a writer on the mm-hmm. office, right? Let's say mm-hmm. that's her first kind of in. Mm-hmm. Um, and she talks about, I think like a lot of the first chunk of the book, how she was, and I, I saw the word failure a lot. There's this one section that's specifically called failing upwards, which I thought was a very interesting phrase. Mm-hmm. Um, but she, you know, jobless for three months in New York with her roommates. And of course she's chosen to live with roommates. These are her friends from college. They were all into theater and acting and, you know, comedy or production or that sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. So she's living with them full time and then she's applying to jobs and she's not getting any luck. Um, And she has, I think she gets a job as a nanny. Um, She Mm -hmm. realizes that's not going to really give her health insurance or pay the bills. So she looks for like a real job. And then she's working as a production assistant for a while, kind of going through these sort of like day and odd jobs. Right. Mm -hmm. And at one point, she says that she and Bren, her roommate, um, realized that they weren't doing anything creative. So they decided to kind of like work on their own thing and get it out there. Mm -hmm. And they do that play with um, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, well, where they are them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, turning like their exercise that they normally do of playing out bits and putting it into a play. Uh, But they, they got the play done. And they submitted it to that festival in New York. Mm-hmm. And then it got produced. Mm-hmm. And and then I think, you know, it started getting, they did two shows a night and they, there was more demand and they became three shows a night. And they, they wanted to do it, or people wanted them to do it in LA. So they went to LA. And at one point, Greg Daniels, who is, you know, producer, creator, writer, whatever, King of the Hill, wrote on The Simpsons, SNL, he and his wife went to see their play and then he reached out to her agent asking for a general meeting. And that's Mm -hmm. how he invited her to the office. And so what I like from this story, what'd you get? What I get is that you just have to get your shit out there. Like you can't do anything. Like, do you have to get your shit? Yeah. You have to get your shit out there. And you never know if it's going to work or not work, but you have to get it out there. Mm-hmm. And it seems like this weird wacky play, right? This like Ben Affleck, they're like two, she's like an Indian girl playing Ben Affleck. Like, <laughs> funny, <laughs> wearing her roommate's brother's clothing or something, but they just did it. They like did it and they got it out there and they, they actually, ap- and they applied it to a film. That was the first step actually applying it to the festival or the play Mm -hmm. festival, whatever theater festival. Mm -hmm. So that makes me think just like to start taking, to actually take these steps and actually get like tangible stuff out there without thinking too much about whether it's going to succeed or not, or where it's going to go afterwards. Do you think she would have been able to do it if she was alone? Um, maybe probably not and not this one, but again, she really put a lot of effort into surrounding herself. I think with people that, um, we're into the same things that she did. Sure. Yeah. And that's her perk is she really does know how to, how to talk with people like, or at least talk at people, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but no, I just, I wonder. Hopefully because, if like, Mindy's she, listening, she'll join our uh, podcast and then talk I'll to let, us. That would be fantastic. I'll let her talk at me all the whole time. I don't <laughs> mind. I'd listen to Mindy. I'd let her talk at me. That's great. Um, let her, I'd ask her so many questions about like the, the film, like, cause she, the one part that really kind of frustrated me, uh, was Mm. she didn't go really into deep detail about 
like the process of screenwriting and like where she goes with that and how she submits and how she works with that. It seemed to be like one or two chapters where she was like in that era of like getting into it. And I was like, I would like more of that, please. Yeah. Um, So Mindy, if you're, if you're listening and you want to come on, I'd, I'd ask you all about that. That's, that'd be be an hour (laughs) and a half of just, just like, yeah. She, uh, she doesn't go into her process except we see that picture of her and again it's like one of those pictures I don't know where it is but there's a picture of her in the book sitting um oh actually and maybe I found it Uh-oh. yeah here it is here it is I don't know if you'll be able to see it but she's sitting on her bed writing uh-huh yeah she, I, think, I mean she described it right she was like this is where I, I do my thing I think she described herself as a looking like a tuberculosis patient or something in bed yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. As you can see, when I write, I like to look like I'm recovering from tuberculosis. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> oh. it, like, it's kind of scary what I see on this end because it's so low res. It just looks like one of those <laughs> like horror photos of like Mothman. Like, just like. Oh, maybe she carefully framed it in that way. I don't know. Maybe. This could all be a whole facade. And... Maybe. Maybe Mindy Kaling doesn't exist. Maybe Mindy Kaling doesn't exist. Um, Maybe Mindy another Kaling thing is I, Mothman. Mothman Prophecies is such a good movie. Is it? Okay, I have to watch it. Have you it seen then. it with Richard Gere? No, no, oh. no. no. <laughs> All, right. All right, Mothman Prophecies, writing it down. Um, Anyways, what? Something, something I wanted to bring up, which I thought was interesting, and um, this kind of goes with like the forward momentum, and we talked a lot about it last time as well. Um, her... Kind of like some, her, how she takes rejection. So I'm mm-hmm. sure this is not always the case because we also see a lot of points where she's like, it seems she's frustrated or she has like imposter syndrome or whatever. She's really stressed. Mm-hmm. Um, but she talks about how she first, when she was initially looking for a job, when she got into New York, um, she wrote a letter to NBC asking how she could submit sketches for late mm-hmm. night with Conan, because it was her dream to work with Conan. She mm-hmm. said, I got a letter back saying that the network could not even open an envelope that contained creative material that was not submitted by an agent. This initial rejection served as NBC negging me, to borrow a phrase from my very favorite book, The Game. It worked. NBC became the sexy guy at the party I needed to be with. When I finally got with him years later, sure, he was fourth place, kind of fat, balding, and a little worse for the wear but I still got him. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was like a cool because it, again, like True. the point of the podcast is to see how different people approach different things sure. along the yeah. way and how that's different from how I might approach it, how you might approach it in your own life. Um, I definitely take rejection. Like I can have the tendency to take it hev- heavily And so I'll be thinking a lot about like, oh, what did I do wrong? You know, I'm horrible. And that'll kind of go on and on for a a good while. And then I'll be like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm over it. And then move on. Um, But in this, this is an instance, at least in this example, where it sounds like she's kind of like, she got rejected, but it, it, it didn't kind of motivated. It didn't seem, yeah. Motivated her more. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was an important part of like what you were saying is like you you would get rejected and then move on. But like I, I mean, like we, we can take rejection as is, but I feel like at least for myself, I would I would just completely cut that thing off. I'd be like, okay, that's not an option anymore. Yeah. When she was like, No, it's still an option, just not right now. Let's 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 talk about that a little more. Tell me more about like how you how you how you do that. So what what's an example or like I mean, is that something you find yourself doing? It sounds like if if a door is closed, you're like, "Hey, this isn't the right path. I need to." Do yeah, and I move else. to the next one. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever applied to a company or like reached out to like an NBC or like something to that to that nature. Um, that if I get rejected, I'm like, "No, no, no, no!" A year from now, like I, I like. I I'm always like staying with companies that I either don't really know or just need a job at this point. Um, So for rejection from that does close the door and then I just move on and I go to the next thing. I don't, I don't sit there and go, well, this is, 
because uh, maybe it's lack of uh, again she she had this dream to work for these guys you know that was her dream to like to do yeah. that so maybe that was her way of being like uh, i don't know but still i i feel like what i would do is i would take that as like a, okay well i guess that's not a thing um and then move on you know and and find another area to put my time into uh, rather than and that's a key difference that i see because I mean, I think Matthew McConaughey, um, obviously, ton of rejections, I'm sure, until he finally made it into Days and Confused. And Correct. and then his other, even after that, like, I think he had a lot of trouble and they made it to the other film where he would play that lawyer. And then, and then yeah. after that, he had offers coming in. But in the past, historically, and I think I'm definitely getting a lot better with this, um, I feel like I just spend too much time worrying about rejection How so? and it and it does well like like you said it kind of makes me think is this the right thing for me like maybe I'm not suited for this or yeah. what ifs all these like so on and so on like that's the list that comes out of me and not the list of this is what I want and <laughs> yeah. so it's less constructive it's more like I'm 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 um shooting myself in the foot a little bit uh -huh. everybody gets rejected you yeah. just have to, you know, it's just a part of the journey. Yeah. I wonder if it's also like going back to the whole point where, you know, she started from early age moving forward with this. Like she kept taking steps forward in this dream. And with that being like, you know, she's got so many years of just getting to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. Yeah. So hitting some sort of wall, she's, it, it probably was just like, okay, well, uh, there's, there's a difference in mentality where like, it's just a continuous going and, like you said, like uh, stopping, like we, we maybe stopping um, fearing that rejection or thinking about that rejection or thinking about uh, even the possibility of rejection will allow us to even take that first step because that's mm. a big, it's a big hindrance. That's a big uh, resistance creator um, in our lives. And uh, that, that might be, maybe she doesn't have any of that fear of rejection, like actually has no fear of rejection. Um, when it comes to career paths, which like, by all means, that sounds like an incredible uh, characteristic to have. But Or maybe she does and she just doesn't let it paralyze her. Well, then how does she do that, Bria? How the fuck does she do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what she should have wrote the book about. How to not be paralyzed when your friends don't hang out with you. <laughs> That's a part two. That's part we'll two. Need to well, submit a request. Um, do you have a dream? Do I have a dream to be a YouTuber? Your dreams to be a YouTuber. That's one of them, yeah. And tell me more about your dream. In what? I mean, in what way? I mean, I could I could go on for a while. I, you yeah. know, I like what kind I, of YouTuber? Commentary, talking. I I like to use my voice a lot. I like I I'm not. I like to to be the brand, you know what I mean? I don't want to I don't want to uh, direct things. I want to be the thing. Uh mm. I I hate to say that it's the influencer type of thing, but at the same time I want it to be I was actually thinking about this for a while of like what and that that's the biggest issue when coming into the YouTube game is like finding that niche or finding anything and like uh, you know in in uh in hindsight or retrospect or whichever word again hanging out with too many Germans um, you know, I, I, you, sh I should be just like posting things and making things and continuing to do things, but there's so much, uh, in the, the last two years of me working in the like YouTube, uh, market and like social media market, a lot of it has to do with like, you need to find your niche and then you start there and then you go. Uh, and when you don't, uh, when I don't have a niche, I don't know what I could do for years on end. I have no idea what I could, would be happy doing for multiple years. So that's the biggest struggle of just like, instead of just trying things and then putting it out there and seeing if it works or seeing if I like it, I just ponder on what I would like because I don't want to waste my time. But the, huh. but at the same point, I'm wasting my time by huh. just thinking, you know? Um, but it's also that What did that you like, like as a kid? Like YouTube. what's it? So I'm imagining for instance, if Mindy was just like, I want to be a writer, but she didn't know that she was into comedy. 
you know? Yeah. And then she has to spend all this time trying to figure out like, okay, what type of writer does she want to be? Yeah. But clearly she knew she liked to write and she performed her things she wrote and she knew that she was into comedy at the same time. Yeah. So I'm curious about like what you've been into. Uh, obviously like you like making YouTube videos and you've done quite a bit of that. Um, but what else are you into or what else have you been into in the past? What are your favorite types of videos to make? What brings you the most joy or flow? Uh, connectivity and com and, and comments and, and um, opinionated. Uh, actually, again, I, I was thinking about this for a little bit. And what I would like to do is I like a lot of what I what I'm really enjoying right now is just watching people and understanding people. And like doing mm. that whole thing, I always enjoy that. I really enjoy yeah. just like listen, like uh, finding something new about somebody, and like really just like be. I, I guess it's more of I like being able to create emotions from people, or like pull things mm. out and make them realize things that they didn't actually know. I like that. Mm. So um, I, I I'd like to make content surrounding that, but I'm just not too sure of what. But like, I don't know how much this has to do with Mindy Kaling, but you know. Um, yeah. Well, part of the part of our, um, I think our criteria or whatever is like, does it make us reflect on our lives? And so I think in that regard, it's in, it's important because these are the reflections that we're kind of wanting to have out of this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It is true. I. I mean. Again, it, I I've had this like the, the the feeling since as a kid, you know, you want I grow up watching all the people, and the the reason I watched people is because I connected with them because I liked them, and I wanted that same feeling. I wanted that ability to like uh, kind of be a good role model was always my point. My old my whole point was always to be a good role model, be something that like you know, because there's a lot of assholes on the internet, and mm -hmm. I think having somebody uh, and, and I don't I think that too many. I, too many assholes and it's too much yeah yeah they're true um that's why so, we're the naysayers not the naysayers correct correct um <laughs> so just being green a positive light. Yeah. green light hey <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Um, um oh when in that video with Sadhguru and matthew mcconaughey i thought it was so funny um, when Sadhguru said something and then Matthew Mah McConaughey would take it in and kind of like, you know, move on to his next question, he would be like, all right, heard, heard. Oh, he had no response. He didn't know what to say to it. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not my point. My point, and my point was just, that it was funny to hear the word heard, but he was kind of like soaking it in, which, which I uh, thought was nice. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. 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 He, he okay. definitely had a lot of, um, like responses and good questions. I oh, did say. he? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, again, he does seem like a very introspective human being, like somebody that would, that, that has, would be able to create. He seems like somebody who does, who does think a lot. He thinks a lot about life. I mean, he smokes a lot of weed, so. Yeah. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do you do when you smoke weed other than watch movies and you got to think about things, you know? I don't know. Um, I do have a couple notes here I wanted to chat about. And one is Please. sort of like, she talks about um, <clears throat> when she got that sort of like temp job to to join the writer's room for the office. Mm -hmm. And I think it sounds like several people didn't think that it would be successful. And she really, you know, it was kind of like just a project. And it was, there was no real, um, no real indication of how big it would be. Mm -hmm. But Another thing I'm kind of noticing and something that I'm uh, consciously sort of applying to my life now is to, at the same time, like, they kind of like have clarity around what they want, but it's more of like a swim lane, for lack of better words. Like, Matthew McConaughey knew he wanted to tell stories. That was like mm -hmm. the phrase that he chose. Yeah. He didn't know that he wanted to be an actor. That's not yeah. what he defined for himself. That's just how it ended up unfolding. For her, she wrote this play with her a friend and roommate because she wanted to do something creative. She wanted to get, out, get it out there and she enjoyed doing that. That's her thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and actually there's something I wanna read from here that's around that. Um, but she, like, I, I think that when she gets that call into the office, she makes it a point to say that 
she had no idea what the office would become. She just accepted that role and it was the only role keeping her in LA. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I bring that up because I think sometimes I have this like idea or this vision of what success might look like or what it might be. And it, things almost never unfold the way we imagine them. So you might think you, you know, it's like YouTube star of a certain sort, but maybe you like pursue that and you pursue a couple of other things. And this other unique opportunity pops up. That's kind of fulfilling the same exact goals or desires, but just in a slightly different way. Sure. And so it seems like kind of like a balance to sort of know the swim lane you want to be in, but then kind of accept and take in different kinds of opportunities that show up within that swim lane. And it's almost that art, like the art of living. (laughs) The art of living. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Know your swim lane. I like that. I wrote that down. Know your swim lane. Yeah. What Hmm. else you got? What other other note? You said you got a couple things you wanted to ponder on. I do. Um... But like what what so what's your what's your swim lane? What do you feel like your swim lane is right now? What part of like because I know you want to go in, you're going towards the um the filmmaking side of things. What where's mm-hmm. your swim lane with that? Um I do I want to create horror movies that or any type of like film work that um makes people think about life has sort of those sort of psychological or human condition or spiritual underpinnings. And so I like, I like the visual mediums telling stories through uh, kind of camera Mm -hmm. or just in a visual means, but the stories have to mean something like they have to bring up a viewpoint that I feel like is important to be shared or questioned or whatever in life. Oh, do you know what your first one would be? Do you know what, like, your is there like a passion project that's been like brewing for a while of like a concept? <clears throat> there is one, um, and it's a docu series called First Gen American. Uh, right. Did I ever yes. share it with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where every episode it uh, follows a different ethnicity and maybe mm-hmm. a couple of different people uh, or families within that ethnicity who grew up as first generation Americans and just learning from them about different parts of their life, what it was like. So kind of similar to you, but you know, like I like understanding people, I like learning about people. I want other people to kind of question life Uh and to actively like, you know, maybe challenge notions they might have or think outside of the box. Um, yeah, of course. Like that. Life's too short not to. And that's kind of the point of it. At least, like, I I feel a, a need to do that from coming from like a, a small town where everybody just like, uh, the, not everybody, but there's a lot of people that I'm friends with that that they're they're like four years younger than me and they're already married and have a kid and are just like settled down already. And I'm like, dude, you're just turned twenty. You have your whole life ahead of you to just like experience things and do things. And and there, I feel like if when you don't do that you you kind of put a barrier up in your life uh hmm. for for um outside perspectives for out i mean not not everybody but the people that i've seen it just seems like it's like they're content with what they have and what they know and they don't want anything outside of it and it's like it's not the fact that they could be wrong it's just the fact that there could be more there could be hmm. more that you you you're missing out on and you know uh or that you don't know or that you don't and then you it's 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 more of I think Question. it's more of, oh, go for it. Do you think it's okay for not everybody to want more? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the point I was going to get to is the fact that I don't think, I think, I think people cannot want more and be content and be happy, but I still think people need to be educated uh, to make an opinion and to have mm. an idea or to even like when it comes to voting. You know, our, our life right now and our whole society and everything Mm. is, is just thrown with, with lies and, and fake Mm. news, this and all that stuff. Nobody, everybody's just arguing around the actual facts of the, of the point. Um, and when you do that, it, it, it 
causes issues for the people that are actually involved in those things. And when you're not educated enough because you haven't stepped outside of it to talk to a certain person, to be involved in a certain way of life, to understand or even like vaguely understand a different way of life um, in a, in a pe personal approach, it, it, it causes a lot of harm. Uh, and that's kind of my, my point, I guess. Uh, to Amen. Hey, hey, I, there we go. Wait, maybe, I, maybe I figured out my life. There we go. There's my swim lane. Educate. I really, I really, really, really like that because what you're doing is you're, it's, it's breaking. You're, you're making the point for breaking that line that's too quickly drawn between sort of like seeing somebody or something or a topic and then making a quick judgment about it without truly understanding or taking the time to learn more about it. Correct. Yeah. I had a video that I made a little while ago. It was about uh, preconceived ideas of people. Um, mm. I got here and I made some friends that were here and, you know, we're in Berlin. Uh, Berlin's a bit of a, a rambunctious city, uh, have mm. a bit of a different odd people. Uh, and for the first little bit, I found myself judging I found myself like really judging what, what they were doing because I was like, that's wrong. That's not right. But like, what is wrong? What is right? You know, who, if you're not hurting anybody and you're in and everything is like, well, you know, who, who does it, what does it matter? And like, it, when you get to know these people and when you get to know the people uh, that you think are wrong, but they're still having happy, fun lives and they're mm -hmm. nice to you and everything, there's no reason that you should say no, or you should say that mm -hmm. they're wrong or even like scoff at it. Um, so it, it's just that it's that idea of like gaining that perspective. It's, it's, it's the need for a personal perspective because you can read something in a book any day and still have the same opinion. But when you interact with somebody that can give you a legitimate, like look you in the eye and tell you exactly what they were th went through. And if you actually listen to them, that is so much better than any book you can read. Uh, it just just like you feel the emotion, you feel the thing and you really can start to like when somebody else brings up that same point, you go, oh, that's what they mean. And you're like, oh, that's what they were trying to talk about on the news the other day. And then Tucker Carlson was saying that they're stupid for <laughs> saying that, you know, like it, it's just like, oh, OK, something clicks. And, and that's we're also and again, I'm going on a rant here for a second, but I think it's also the I fact that we're also love it separated we're also separated right now uh and that, it's like, odd because we have all this technology that can like connect us bring right to connect us yeah. bring us together it's so fucking but, stupid yeah <laughs> uh, yeah so like it's just it's it's very funny like we have so much of such such an opportunity to understand everything about everybody uh yet that's the we biggest act like struggle complete right assholes. now we're, that's the biggest struggle right now, is, at least within the states and like uh, in the Western world. I don't know how it is anywhere else. Haven't been there. Don't know anybody from there uh, yet. But um, it's just like that seems to be the biggest thing. Nobody trusts each other. Nobody wants to talk to each other. Everybody hates each other. Uh, or at least everybody that or a, a majority or at least the majority that it seems to be, you know. That's so, uh, yeah, I, oh, man, I love, I love this topic. And I just like completely I really resonate with everything you're saying and it's also fun to me to like I don't know hear you talking about it with so much passion <laughs> um but I'm even imagining like taking a topic like a question or something and then you travel to like different countries and mm -hmm. ask people from different countries so their different. answer to the same question yep. it's gonna be and a people lot actually take the time to listen to it and mm -hmm. I just that that type of content content is very very meaningful mm -hmm. yeah. that's why i liked anthony bourdain so much uh when he was doing mm. his kitchen confidential not kitchen, uh, when he was doing uh no reservations and all that stuff his his representation of the cities and the people in the cities was very interesting and it was very personal and i really liked that uh because it, it wasn't just him talking about food it was him talking to somebody about the culture over good food you know well i think he'll be episode three Hey, you're right. You're right. You're right. All right. So on that note, do we want to, uh, do you have any other points that you want to bring up on, on the Mindy Kaling book? Yeah, this would be such a good wrap up point, but I do have one more Do it. or two more. Okay. So I'm going to pull it up. Um, okay. this one is about, I, I really, really like this. 
And to me, it kind of like summarizes just the main like take home, take away. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about writing your own part. So she's talking about how if she were to ever give any advice, like this is, it would be this, write your own part. It is the only way I've gotten anywhere. It is much harder work, but sometimes you have to take destiny into your own hands. It forces you to think about what your strengths really are. And once you find them, you can showcase them and no one can stop you. I wasn't going to be able to showcase what I did best in an off, off Broadway revival of our town. I was going to do it playing Ben Affleck. So other than writing your own part in a, in a movie or a play, how do you write your own part elsewhere? I think what she means is writing your own part in life. Exactly. Um, how do you, what does yeah. that mean though? Does that mean like, Go what if you I, have something. What I found interesting from this is that like thinking about how we can best showcase our strengths and creating opportunities for us to do that instead of molding ourselves to opportunities or situations we find ourselves in or people telling us or giving us specific roles to fit into that serve only what they need. So How do you feel about doing that though, other than like, what, what's this, what's the structure? What's the movement? Uh, is it just putting like doing what you actually want to do, setting aside time to do what you're, you're passionate about? I wonder if the first step is even defining with more clarity, like, sure. and iterating that, definition over time of what 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 someone feels their strengths are and mm -hmm. what they want to bring into this world because if I if like if we take her example and I'm kind of times really going I'm going out to cuff talking out loud obviously okay. um take her example and let's say like doing an off off Broadway of a play that already exists that maybe somebody else is directing. Mm -hmm. And so what is she doing there? She's kind of like going with the flow with something that's more or less already created and helping mm -hmm. it bring it to life again in this other version. Mm -hmm. With their Ben and Matt play, mm -hmm. they're using kind of like they kind of like use what they normally do what they have fun at what sort of like natural to them mm -hmm. and put that out and it was like a entirely new perspective that they were bringing i think for right? creatives that's very good because it's like in order to stand out you kind of have to do something that's different and like that's the scariest thing is to, to mm. test whether or not something different would work and in her instance it worked because i mean mm. I, I've been thinking about comedy quite a bit lately of like, uh, you know, how, how do you, how do you write a good joke? How do you write good stand up? How do you do that? How do you write something into a, an, into a TV show? Um, but then you think about it. It's like, there's a lot of times where you tell stories that they're just funny. Like you can tell a story that's funny um, mm -hmm. or re re retell something that happened to you and it becomes funny. Um, so like, obviously you can, you w in the writer's room, they're probably all laughing. They're probably all being like, yeah, hey, that's, that's funny. That's really funny. Like, like just start going for it. Um, and I wonder, I, I don't, I don't but I know think why. That's I wanna... the incremental, I think that's the incremental nature of it. Cause I think it's like, wait, wait, how do I, how do I write stand up? You already know what to, how to write what you already know how to write. So the first yeah. step is getting that out there. And then that yeah. takes you to the next thing step and then that takes you to the next step and that's related to the actually the last note I wanted to bring up which is so she talks about it's kind of a small tidbit that I think is probably maybe easy to miss by by probably most people but um so when she's talking about how she got into the writer's room for the first time and she talks about that's where she actually learned how to write comedy mm -hmm. is in that writer's room around these people who had all this experience where she had yeah. none yeah 
And however, she talks about how much she loved it, um, which is something I wanted to bring up, but it's kind of related to what you were saying. Uh, the job of a comedy writer is essentially to sit and have funny conversations about hypothetical situations, and you're rewarded for originality of detail. It is exhilarating, and I didn't want it to stop. I soon started dreading the weekends because weekends meant saying goodbye to this creative, cheerful atmosphere. Do you remember uh, the first idea of the name for the show we had? No. What was it? Like, uh, Mondays can be good or something like that. <laughs> Mondays can be great. Yeah, I think so. I think I remember that. How awesome would it be to be doing something for your career? That on a Monday, you're excited. You don't want it to end. You like don't want the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, oh yeah. my gosh, that's the dream. That is the dream, isn't it? When you isn't the saying like, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. So. Wow. But yeah. I think it's also a good example of how like it's all iterative, right? Like you do you you take what you have now, and then you make something with it, and then that gets you to the next step. And then you learn a little bit more and then you take what you have there and you learn a little bit more and you get to the next step and so on and so forth. And then whatever swim lane you choose for yourself, eventually you'll find yourself learning the things that you're like, Hey, how do I, you know, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. um, or putting yourself in the right situations where yeah, the right people will tell you. Yeah. 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 Huh. 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 <laughs> All right. all right so monday we're all gonna be happy going to work right is that what's gonna happen next monday everybody should be happy going to work i think we also learned that it's a journey and a path that takes some unfolding it is it is, yeah. it is. the journey of reading this book was also a thing so priya would you recommend this book to people yes or no i would recommend this book yes okay. um uh i would say it was a little bit harder for me to um, kind of get into as an audiobook just because of how I learned. So I really gained a lot from actually reading it and having it in my hands. Sure. Um, so that's something I learned about myself. But uh, I think it's, I think on kind of like a surface level as well, it's just is really good to have different kinds of perspectives out there. Um, I'm thinking like 30 years ago, I can never imagine a book like this, like an Indian American female comedy writer. And yeah. so just like hearing about how she thinks, even if it's list of things she doesn't like, or that's like, it's mm -hmm. extra information and perspectives that mm -hmm. I, you know, there hasn't been a lot of in the past. Um, so I think it's important to kind of, to learn from that. And, you know, I, it, it has helped me um, reflect on my life and see a couple of things that I can try, uh, like tools that I can add to my toolkit, different approaches. For instance, the screenwriting writing lab, um, just applying for it with whatever screenplay I can come up with. I don't mm -hmm. think maybe before I read this book, I might've not even made that decision where now I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to submit something just like she submitted something to that festival. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I have learned. Yeah, I've learned quite a bit. Um, it would be interesting to hear from her in another book about maybe the whys or the details of maybe some of how she thought or some of the family background and those type of things. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, hopefully she'll maybe she'll write more about that at some point. Maybe. I, I, I don't know what her other books though. are about. But yeah, um, from my side of things, I would recommend it. Uh, I felt it was a little all over the place sometimes, especially with those random comments and random at the end, there was one that was nice. Uh, it, it was like a little comment on like, uh, at least from a guy's perspective, she said like, we want to, you want a man, not a boy. I liked that. There was like a, it was like a self-reflection. I thought you were like, going to say you didn't like that. <laughs> no, no, I did. I actually really uh -huh. did because like it, it was a, a heavy self-reflection. It was just like, oh, which one am I? You know, mm. am I this yet? And like, because there's some things that she said that like, I, 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 like you, you may agree with all of it. You may agree with some of it. Even still, it's like seeing the perspective of that is like, which one do I fit into? And why am I okay with some of it? And why am I not? 
So mm. some, even some of those little odd nuggets that she throws in there really are, they, they do, they do make you think a little bit. Some of the parts were really cool too about, um, like the one you just said where she was in the writer's room and it's that positive, like continuous to just like do hypotheticals forever. I love mm. doing that. So like getting her to like talk about that whole process for a little while was very, very cool. Um, so overall, I think that it has a lot of like insightful ideas and perspectives and, and, you know, it, it has its sparkly moments. There are moments mm. where I'm just like, okay. Um, yeah. but overall, overall, I think mm. it would be, it would be uh, a decent read. Uh, and it's yeah. not very long either. So, you know, go for and it. And I think it's interesting because it's very different from what probably we expected we would get something out of. Oh, absolutely. I did not expect that at all. I didn't think, like, I, I, I didn't, I, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. Um, but, <laughs> I, I, but, like, at the same time, like, after reading that, I was like, uh, I, sh well, I guess we should have expected that, I guess, yeah. you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, from a comedy writer. Uh, well, what's next? Uh, Anthony Bourdain. Well, first, are we giving it the stamp of approval? Are we giving this the stamp of approval? We have the depiction of overcoming a struggle. Was it there? I don't have that one checked. I didn't I, remember. I, I think there were, there were depictions of struggles. There were depictions of getting to the other side of the struggle and making mm -hmm. decisions that uh -huh. led to the other side of the struggle. There was less of a depiction of the sort of maybe the psychological nature of sure. how to overcome a struggle or how she did or what she was thinking or the thought process. Mm -hmm. I would say this book is not a book about thought process, which is something I'm genuinely very interested in. Yeah. Um, so. I wouldn't check that one completely. I would yeah, say I parts it of it are there, but it's not completely checked. Yeah. Okay. Uh, new way of looking at approaching life. Did we get some of that? I think we did. I did. I think so too. Yeah, I did as well. I mean, we have, I, I wrote down, I think I figured out my life in this whole podcast. So it's great. Uh, <laughs> causes self-reflection. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Engaging leaves a lasting impression. Is it memorable? Yeah, I'll remember it. Yeah, I'll remember reading it. Yeah, okay, I'll I'll do that one. Do you walk away feeling empowered? Yeah. At first, I didn't, but now I do, and it's in a different way again than what I would have expected, and sure. it's in a way that's more like just be yourself and sure. let it be. Like, don't be afraid to throw it out there, lay it out there how you are. Mm -hmm. and get what you have out there at this time Let so yeah so yes maybe not quite of a as strong of a check yeah as maybe some other books but i do think that there is a check there okay so we got a 0.5 and a 0.5 for the point five for the first one, which is the depiction of overcoming struggle, and then yeah. a point five for the walking away empowered. So in overall, what about you? Have, what about you for the last one? Feeling empowered? Yeah, I mean, like I think after analyzing it, yes. Initially, mm -hmm. no. Initially, mm -hmm. I was like, this is yeah, that was fine. I liked learning I the a little bit reaction. about it. But yeah. so I'll give it the point five, like for mm -hmm. the the post the mm -hmm. post analyzation. Mm -hmm. Um. So we have one, two, three. Four out of five. We got a four out of okay. five for this guy. So Mindy Kaling's. This girl. We're hang they're hanging. Uh, what is it? Um, why is everybody hanging out without me? Has gotten the yay sayers four out of five rating. Woo, woo, woo. Congratulations, Mindy Kaling. <laughs> She's staying up all night just to hear this rating. Oh, I, I bet know. she is. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> but what I'm really excited about is for you to read this next book. This next book is my favorite book of all time and you I told me it's a long book. so it's i think i'll need a couple weeks to read it give me two that's weeks fine. that's fine that's all okay. good i'm gonna need two weeks to figure out my life anyways now that i've figured it out you know <laughs> um, <laughs> oh so, my gosh well thank but, you everybody for joining us and analyzing our lives with us and mindy kaling yeah thank, thank you everybody thank you, mindy Thank you, Mindy. Listen to Anthony Bourdain's Kitchen Confidential and come back next week. And we'll, we'll right. you'll listen to me geek out about him for oh, an hour yeah. and a half. 
that's gonna be I'm great. I'm excited. Oh, that's it's gonna, gonna be, be great. great. Oh, bye, Priya. Peace out. Bye.